You are listening to the APSI Podcast, the association of people supporting employment first, with your host, Chris Davies. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another Minnesota APSI Podcast. And I got to tell you, we are excited to be here today in our recording studio in Little Canada and have a very exciting guest uh, to introduce you to. Uh, her name is Pallavi Shattuck. Pallavi goes by V. Say hi, V. Hi, everyone. And we're having, we've just been having a blast here leading up to, to the recording uh, of the podcast here, talking about all sorts of things. As you might notice, uh, you know, V is a chef, and we're going to learn a lot about uh, the the skills that V has and the and the education that she's had in the in the area of culinary arts. Uh, but before we get to that, just a couple housekeeping things, if I could, V, for for our audience out there. Um, perhaps you haven't seen a Minnesota APSI podcast before. You've never heard of Minnesota APSI before, and I always like to start out by telling you, you know, what our purpose is and, and reading to you our purpose statement. And so Minnesota APSI is an action-oriented organization, and we exist to bring people together to raise expectations so that people with disabilities can be employed and contribute and assume their roles and responsibilities as citizens in their communities. We believe that employment is the same wages, standards, responsibilities, expectations, and opportunities available to any working age adult. One person at a time, employment is the avenue out of poverty and isolation. And I, I know our guest today agrees with all those things. Isn't that right? Yes. Yeah, so V, uh, it's so great to have you here. Uh, I'd love to introduce you to the to the APSI audience out there. Uh, v is a self-advocate, and she's an aspiring chef, and, and I would even say just in getting to know you that you are indeed a chef uh, from the Twin Cities. Um, and, you know, we'd love to learn a little bit more about you. So, you know, enough about me. Uh, tell us about yourself, V. Uh, my name is Pallavi Shattuck. I like to cook and read and one day I want to travel, and I like to watch Food Network. My favorite cooking um, show would be Worst Cooks in America, because it's so funny, like, to see people who can't cook, and then they, at the end of the time they leave, they can cook, like, basic, simple recipes. Yeah, that's fantastic. And I understand you moved here at the age of 13. Tell us about that. I am adopted from India. I came here when I was 13, and I had to learn the language. I didn't know anything here. I didn't like the weather. It's too cold. And yeah, I had to learn a lot of things when I first came here. English, um, reading, writing, different schooling. Um, I think that's... Yeah. Yeah, you know, and and uh, it's it's interesting. You said it's too cold. Dana, we were just doing a little sound check a minute ago, and and Dana, our executive producer, asked us if what would we prefer, one hundred and ten or minus twenty five. And you didn't need any time to think about that, did you? <laughs> no. Yeah, right, right to the one one ten. So I understand you took cooking classes in middle school. So it goes all the way back uh, till then. Did you always know you you were interested in cooking? Um, I always liked cooking. Like in seventh grade, I started doing like home ec classes, and I enjoyed it. And it's fun to make something like homemade, out of scratch without like a box mix. Absolutely, uh, yeah. Now uh, with with fresh whole ingredients, yeah, is, is always a, always a good thing. Um and. So as time went on, I understand you worked uh, as a in a coffee shop, got some experience over in St. Paul. That's my stomping grounds. Yeah, I worked at Lucy's Coffee Shop, um, like helping with preparing sandwiches, making drinks, um, cleaning, dish, doing dishes, um, using the cash register. Um, 
alternative it. Where it, where is Lucy's located? Oh, exactly. it's off a university in, f- I think, Fairview, but it's not there anymore. Oh, it's, it's not no there owner. anymore. Yeah. Okay, all yeah. right. Because I was gonna say mm-hmm. I could uh, I could pop in over there, but uh, maybe do you know do you know if it's even anything now or is it just? Um, I'm not sure what's. Yeah, so yeah, many things have kind of taken kinda over that area. Side. Okay, excuse me. Uh, so tell us about some of your favorite dishes. Uh, my favorite dishes, I would say Indian chicken tikka masala, chicken biryani. Um, I like baking as well, so like banana bread. Um, tirdaha dish is one of the dishes I like. Any, pretty much anything. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. uh, I understand you like to sort of put an uh, Indian twist to to some of these dishes. Yeah, I take uh, Indian seasonings and combine it with like American food, and um, it's kind of make it a little more spicier. Like, so it's I guess from home. Yeah. Well, I bet I I would like it. I I love spice. And uh, hotter the better. Not everybody is that way, especially here in Minnesota. No. Would you, is, would you agree? Yeah, because when I first came here, I didn't like the meat. Like I never had the meat until I came here, and I thought the food was boring, <laughs> like mm. no flavor, or like kind of thought it was plain. So I would put hot sauce on everything. Yeah, I mm. I look like a you know, kind of typical Minnesotan, I guess. And when I go to a restaurant and I ask for it spicy, they kind of, they just assume I want the Minnesota spice, not the <laughs> actual, you know, a- actual spice. So, yeah. And by the way, I, I meant to, at the beginning of the podcast, uh, mention uh, for um, our audience out there, uh, just a visual description of myself. So I'm a I'm a male. I'm I'm uh, white. I am bald. I have a red beard, and today I am wearing a blue shirt and khakis. And I use uh, he and him uh, pronouns. Would you like to describe yourself? Um, uh, sure. I'm wearing chef's uniform, uh, black hair, uh, like Asian dark skin. I would say. Is that dark? Yeah, so I would I would agree with yeah. that. Yeah, pretty short, four nine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But we're both uh, sitting on couches today, so uh, our couch and a chair, so so we could be any height we want to be. Yeah. <laughs> um. All right. Well, great. Well, I'm so I'm so glad you joined us. So, you know, thanks for telling us a little bit about your interest in cooking. Uh, what about outside of cooking? Uh, what else do you like to do for fun? Outside of cooking, I like to go um, cycling there's a twin cities adaptive cycling program located in minneapolis it's a non-profit you can donate ten dollars if not it's it's okay um it's the two people run it kato and tommy and there's adaptive cycles like trikes hand cycles people who have had strokes they come there and improve their health and it's good to meet new people there and make friends and it's such a fun place to go hang out and get out of the house and it's a cool place yeah it sounds like a really yeah. uh, great community uh, it's twin city adaptive twin city. cycle adaptive cycling Twin Cities Adaptive Cycling. Okay, Twin Cities Adaptive Cycling. Got it. Yeah. And so if somebody just Googled that, they could find the website, place they could donate if they wanted to? Yep. Okay. How often do you uh, connect with them? I ride with them twice a week. Oh, that's fabulous. On Wednesday, I did like 12 miles. Wow. Yeah. And it's been humid. Yeah. yeah. But you like it hot, as you said, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's and I like that's rock good. climbing as well. Uh, Ah, okay. You're Vertical you're Endeavors yeah. is a cool place. They train you how to use the 
the wall and the equipment before you can go on your own. They want to make sure everyone's staying safe. So. Yeah, well, that would yeah. make sense. Uh, mm -hmm. You want to, you know, when you c climb up the mountain, I guess you want to come <laughs> back down, right? Yep. <laughs> That's great. Well, you're very adventurous. Uh, you must be in great shape and strong, too. Yeah, I like, yeah. I go to the gym to work yeah. out, too. I bet that comes in handy when you're, you know, operating your knives. Uh, v was showing me, and, and she'll have a chance to show everybody uh, soon, but uh, uh, she brought her, her, I don't know if I'm using the words right, but your kit of knives or your, what do you, what do you say? What do you call um, it? Knife carrier. Okay. Measuring spoons, cups, um, talking, thermometer, and a knife. Very good, very good, and uh, we will definitely uh, take a look at uh, look at those a little bit later in the the podcast here. Uh, but let's let's get into some of the uh, things that happened that really helped you hone your your skills. Uh, I know you did a culinary internship recently. Yeah, I'm doing. I did the culinary training, the vocational um, culinary training. It's a 10-week program, and you learn about food safety, knife skills, um, scratch cooking, um, and um, about, like, like where they get their food. So, like, a little bit about background of, um, like, how things work in the food chain. Okay, yeah. so sort of the the origin or yeah. or sort of uh, how the food chain is connected? Um, kind of like the processing and where it goes and how, like, where you get your products. And, like, before it gets to you, there's, like, a process that they go through. Okay. So. And after, mm -hmm. um, after you did the internship, did you never want to eat processed food again? Or maybe you already felt that way before you started. Yeah, like homemade. They in, I don't know, fresh ingredients, good local markets, fresh stuff. What markets so do you like, like to go to? What are I some of your favorites? I go to Indian grocery mostly. Um, They got like, I'd say good vegetables and stuff. If I go to Hy-Vee, Hy-Vee is pretty good. Okay. And they get fresh <laughs> fruits and vegetables. Yeah. Yeah, Hy-Vee is a Hy good store. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a good store. I have a, believe it or not, I have a friend named Ivy who works at Hy-Vee. Oh, that's funny. I know, <laughs> you can't make that up. <laughs> <laughs> She's kind of a superstar there. Um, So this is down in Omaha, uh, which is, uh, I'm not sure, but I think Hy-Vee might have started down there. When I was in college, I used to go to Hy-Vee in Omaha. So, uh, and your the the program you went through is uh, Voku, right? Vocational, yeah, vocational culinary. culinary, yeah, and that's what you're wearing on your your chef's the uniform, yeah, yeah, on your jacket, yeah. Fantastic. Um, so uh, after you did the internship, you you went on a a job search. Is that right? Um, this was before the training. Okay, so this so is this before was the training. Before the training, I job searched for two years. I didn't uh find a job. I guess no one wanted to hire because of the um, blindness or disability. They hesitate to hire uh employ um hiring people and like I don't know if they know enough about the. Um, like disabled community, or or they just are scared to hire people with disabilities. Do even you, though you go ahead, excuse me. Even though you have the training, and you know you can do it. To sh like, they don't give you chance. I guess, in a way. Do you have any advice for job seekers? Um, who might also, you know, experience blindness or or perhaps another disability and or the interviewers, you know, the, the businesses mm -hmm. on how that can be talked about in a, in a job interview. 
close of course. Oh, I'm just wondering if you have any advice, me. you know, or how maybe you, um, how did you, what kind of roadblocks and how did you navigate through all that? Um, staying positive because it's really easy to like think negative or get down and like stop doing the job search. There are people out there who will hire. It's just has to be the right timing and right place. So, like, stay positive, keep on job searching, and put yourself out there. And um, I think those are all all really important things. You know, sometimes uh, I think disclosure can be be really tricky. When and, and where? Do you have any thoughts about that? Um, I know the hiring uh, manager... They have rules they have to follow as well. So they can't really ask about your disability unless you bring up and open that door and Mm -hmm. talk about it and tell them about your disability and your skills. And kind of going back to the internship, uh, I know you shared with me earlier that there were some other obstacles you ran into there. Tell us, uh, tell us about that. Um, I was the only blind person to go through that training. Um, I had 12 um, sighted students alongside who were doing the same training. Okay. And um, it was challenging at first because you had to learn a new environment. And... Being safe in the kitchen with the knives and all the utensils you have to use, stoves and other like sharp objects, so communication was the big thing. Sure, I I hope uh, I hope they were able to learn some things by having you, you know, as a student about ways they could approach that. Hopefully, in the future, hopefully, uh, they were able to take something away from that. Uh, experience as well. It sounds like you navigated through it, though, uh, very well. Yeah. You know, I'd love to actually see your knives, and I think everybody else would. Would you like to bring out your your uh, your knife bag and kind of show us what's in there? Sure. This is quite the collection. I'm going to tell you that right now, folks. I I got a pre uh, a pre peek a minute ago. So do I just pull it out? Yeah, you can put it right here on the table. V, I just moved your water okay. up here by the, I believe this is the this, this thermometer mm-hmm. that I have in my hand. Is this a, like a talking thermometer here? Yeah, we can move. And it'll tell you like the degrees. So I have my fingers on it. And that's what it said. That's what it says. So yeah. it said if if, you, if it didn't come through because it's not in front of the mic, the talking thermometer or the thermometer told us that it's sixty six point five degrees right now. Is that is that right? Yeah. Yeah. I I was feeling like it was more like sixty seven point eight, but uh, I guess I was, I was off by a couple. <laughs> All right. Okay. So yeah. So tell us what you got in there. I have a garlic peeler. So if you want don't want to do the old old fashioned way, um, with a knife you can use a garlic press. You just put the garlic in and then fold it, and it cuts um, presses the garlic. And we were talking about some of the difference differences between actually dicing garlic with a knife. If I'm saying it right, just correct me anytime I'm wrong. And and the press and some of the differences. What what are the differences? Is there actually um, a difference in taste or? Um, like mincing. Yeah, mincing. mincing thank you. Yeah, like mincing or dicing. So um, clearly, I'm not. I don't have the skills you mincing have. Mincing is smaller. Dicing is like bigger pieces, but it's still smaller. Um, when I first started the training, it took me five minutes to mince the garlic. Now I can do mincing garlic in one minute with like handful of cloves of garlic. Wow. So I went from five minutes to doing one clove to like handful in one like minute. 
That's amazing. I think it would take me about 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a very methodical mincer. Uh, that That's cool. So so it's really more about the tex texture versus <clears throat> how it releases mm -hmm. the flavor of the garlic. Is that yeah. right? And like the technique, how you cut it. Okay. With, with different um, like onions and all the other vegetables, there are different ways to cut them. Mm -hmm. So I learned a lot of that too. Yeah. So Very good. Cutting. So, so that's the garlic press, yeah. and then what? What's what do you have here? Uh, I have a peeler for like any peeling in the kitchen. Okay. Very good. Are those two different types of peelers, um, or I just had one. I just had two in case I lost one. Oh, that's so. a good idea. Yeah. That pretty much that's pretty much everything in my life. I have two in case I lose one. <coughs> All right, so now let's get to the big stuff. Um, there's like different kinds of knives. There's a bread knife, and chef's knife is the mostly you use. And then paring knife for like smaller things, and tomato knife. Okay. For like, so it's easier to do it. Can we um can we open the flap and see the knives? There we go. Yeah. I don't want to knock. No, oh, that's okay. These are all. We're the all about knives. knocking stuff over here. <laughs> and I got another pe um like a shredder. Okay. And um sharpener. To sharpen oh, your knives. Oh, uh -huh. okay. Like a, so, you so hold it. Yeah, go ahead. You're like you're gonna tell us how to use it. Hold it, and you can like do the hold the knife at an angle, and mm. then like it makes it um, sharpen the knife. So kind of like Game of sharpener. Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> I or love it. Or sometimes there's a block that people use different kinds of blocks. Okay, to to sharpen their knives. You mean? Yeah. Okay. For sharpening. All right. What about, can you actually get, like, something that holds your knife that every time you put it in and take it out, it, it sharpens it? Is, I thought I saw something like that once before. I don't know. If they have. I don't know, you know. I don't know if they have. I never Maybe I dreamed it. it. I never used I it. i tell you what. Like let's invent this. Maybe All right. We'll invent there. it, and you and I, we can uh, we can go in on it. What do you say? Yeah, that'd be cool. All right. And, and the knives here, uh, like you said, uh, you were telling me before we went on set here that like you use the chef knife mostly. Yeah, that's so the main knife. You that's use. the main knife. So yeah. what does that mean? What's what's a main knife? Because um, to me, I don't. A knife's a knife. So chef's knife is like bigger, and you can use it pretty much for anything. Okay. Yeah. All right. Like and bigger stuff, it's easier than yeah. It's the main one you use all the time. Okay. There are some knives like the boning knife you. Don't use it as much. Depends on like what kind of food you're making. Mm -hmm. By boning, and do you mean getting meat off a bone or? Um, like cutting that? through the bones. Oh, like cutting, cutting through the bones. So cutting the bones. Okay. So it has to be a sharper. Sure. Than the other, I guess. Okay. No, that makes ones. sense. That makes sense. And then you got the bread knife. So. What makes a bread knife unique? It has a longer um teeth, so it's like. Thicker, uh, okay. like a wider, okay. so it cuts the bed through. Just cuts it more evenly. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, I, to me, you know, a knife. The difference in knives are, are size. I mean, I don't know uh, all the technical things, so it's it's fun learning about them. Um, and which one's your chef knife? Show us that one. Um, I think I took it out. Oh, you know what? There. I think you're right. I think it's actually on the table. Yeah. Can can I grab it? Mm-hmm. All right. I think that's still yeah. in here. So is is this it here? Mm -hmm. I'm I got the handle out here so you can grab it. Yeah. That's the chef knife. Okay. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Right on. Yep. Cool. Uh and so uh I'll take the chef knife, put it down here. Do you mind if I fold this back? Yeah, I don't mind. Okay, so I'm gonna fold this back. And then you have a mm -hmm. few other things on the table here. Um, I'll grab, I'll grab them for you. So There's, let's see. I 
Got him right at uh, 12 o'clock there. So there's grill, measuring spoons. This is a deluxe set I got at Maxi Aids because normal they have smaller ones, but I like um, getting smaller measurements if I need it. This is like two tablespoons. Usually a lot of people can't find two tablespoons. Like in your normal regular set, you can't. There's none. That Yeah, that is a, now that you say it, I don't mm -hmm. think I've ever seen a two tablespoons. I always have to put in one yeah, and then two. One. Yeah. Yeah. And so it gets pretty small. There's a level for when you're baking. Okay. Just hold it flat and then ah, levels off. Okay, so that's a leveler there. Yeah. Okay. And you can use this for the smallest. Oh yeah. What size is that one? Um one thirty second. Oh wow. Something yeah. Yeah. So you can use it for like really small seasoning or anything. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, for some reason I'm picturing like a little bit of vanilla like put in this, something like yeah, that. Tiny huh? bit, yeah, tiny bit. Really yeah. tiny. Yeah. So oh. it goes from a lot of different measurements in between. Yeah. That's fantastic. And you said they have Braille on them, so yeah, you can read them. Braille. Yeah. And then, is there a printer? Uh, yep, I can see it. It yeah, says 132nd. Yep, and just like it's you said. raised up as yep. well. Yep. So there's three. So because you, uh, you know, use them so much, do you kind of have a feel for, mm -hmm. for what's what, I would imagine? And then these are the measuring cups. Okay. And those also have Braille on them? Yep. Very good. Like one, one and a half, one third, one fourth. And you have your certificates here. Uh, you mind if I just hold them up yeah, for everybody to see? Yeah, so I don't mind. This one is a, uh, oh, most valuable and most valuable, sorry, I can't say the word, and brave. Uh, and this is from, uh, Vo what do you say, Voku or Vokul? What do Voku? you say? Like Vocool, I think. Yeah, Vocool. Yeah. Uh, recognition Award. And that was during your uh, internship, right? Is that right? Yeah, my training. Okay, your training. Okay. Yeah. Very good. So why did you get the most uh, brave then? Um, I guess being blind and being in the kitchen is pretty brave. <laughs> Trying to Well, I think it's brave being in a kitchen, period. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, good for you. Um, so... This one says uh, it's just your certificate, not just, but it's your certificate of completion. Mm -hmm. um, and then this one is a recognition award. Certificate is proudly presented to uh, Pallavi Shattuck as being the most progressive. Your willingness to persevere no matter what is such an important trait to have. Thank you for your continuous efforts uh, to the completion of the Vocool program and your journey to becoming a great chef. Uh, and you really are, really. It's just the beginning of your journey. Yep. You know, I, I really think your arc has so far to go. And I'm very excited for you and, and all that you're going to do. And just being selfish, I'd really like to, you know, <laughs> I I think I mentioned earlier that I like spicy food, so you know I'd love to be a, if you're ever like experimenting and want a taster, you know how to find me. <laughs> okay. I'll just show up here. <laughs> <laughs> just show up here. We'll tell we're in uh, our CEO's office, uh, which is our recording studio. We'll just tell him to get the heck out so we can test some food, right? <laughs> okay. Um, and then this one says uh, the Good Acre Food yeah. Community. What's th what's the good acre? Or they all say that now that I look at mm -hmm. it. Okay. They're all like funded by the same like I see. farm to school getting like education out for people. Okay. Yeah. All right, very good. And this one is your uh, certificate of completion. So. So, you know, no joking aside, I I'd sort of kitted around a little bit about experimenting and tasting your your food. Do you have any aspirations to like invent your own dish? Um, yeah, like there is one Indian pizza, Pizza Karma. They stole my idea. Mm. Cause I came up with it first, and 
Next thing I know, I went online and they stole it. Because <laughs> I've been thinking about it for a while, but I didn't, like, do anything with it. So I tried their food. It's really good. And kind of want to build off of that and mix, like, American food with Indian seasoning, spice, and the techniques, the way they cook it. I love that. And, you know, you don't, uh, like you said, you have the, what's, what's it called again? Pizza Karma? Yeah, Pizza Karma. Pizza Karma. And you had that idea. Unfortunately, they must have too, or maybe they were yeah. a, a little bird in a room somewhere and heard you talking <laughs> about it. But uh, it's such a great idea, and it's not one I hear that much about. I don't know if our audience can hear something in the background, but somebody's printing something out to the printer here. So uh, we'll we'll get to the bottom of that later. But uh, you probably couldn't even hear it, and I didn't even need to say that. But hey, right? It's uh, it's a live. This is live theater, isn't it? Uh, v. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Live Everything. theater. We're having a good time. Um. So, uh. What I what I was gonna say was, it's not something you hear that much about. I mean, everybody's aware of Tex-Mex, for example. You know, sort of the fusion of you know Texas. And, uh, you know, style cooking and Mexican uh, food. Uh, but you don't hear too much about the, the fusion or sort of the, the mixture of American and Indian, you know, kind of meeting, you know, mm -hmm. together. Uh, at least I certainly haven't. And um, I think it's, a, it's an untapped market. Yeah, there's Indian restaurants, there's Chinese restaurants. So, um, so there are, like restaurants from there but i want to um like mix two dishes like two countries and make it into one like cool dish i love that's it that's sweet like american but also like indian seasonings yeah well uh i'm excited you know i uh, I, I just sort of i'm a, I'm, a, I'm a person that likes to kind of visualize you know the future and uh, I'm just visualizing all sorts of exciting things uh, for your future. And someday if you have this establishment, uh, you can count me in. I'll be there. Um, so I understand uh, that at the end of your internship, you did do some work with a catering business. Yeah, that's my um, internship with the chef. This is after the training. Okay. So um, internship is after the, the culinary training. Right. That's what I meant yeah. to say. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. So you did the internship after the training and uh was it was with Shell's Kitchen Catering? Yeah. 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 Tell us about uh Shell's. Um she has a catering business, so I prep for her as needed. You had to get 100 hours in. So I'm working on getting 100 hours in before I can job search and learn as much as I can with her since she's <laughs> she's well known chef out there so that's great what what kind of things uh have you been learning from uh does she go by shell or Lachelle? Uh, Lachelle. what have you been learning from Lachelle? um food prep um doing it like safely and quickly um just cooking different ways on the stove and a lot of prepping because um, when you're catering, there's usually food for like a couple hundred, so it takes a lot of time doing one task sometimes before moving to the next. So not taking too slow of a time, but still like doing it in um timely manner. Sure. Because if you hold the line back, everything's going to go slow and it will delay everything. So, yeah. Yeah, it's really so. uh, sort of an inter interdependent relationship between kitchen and and what where the next step is, you know, af with the, the prep. And uh, I'm just sitting here thinking about the term culinary arts, and I've never really thought of it as clear or as emphatically as I am right now just listening to you talk about it because it truly is an art form, isn't it? 
It's not just something you just show yeah. up and do. Well, there's a lot of um, prep work before dishes are completed. A lot of um, making sure you have the ingredients, timing of everything, and do like the art of doing it itself. So yeah, I mean, I think it. you know when we go to a nice restaurant, which is which is a special occasion for me. But this really nice dish, right, shows up on your table, and as the guest, it just feels like, well, it's just magic. Like, they just go in the back, and they grab this nice dish, and they put it on your table. But there's so much that goes into to making that come out the right way. Yep. Sometimes they prepare it the night before as well. Okay. Just to make sure. Like, even the prep work, sometimes they do it the night before, so they're not rushing like the next day very good very good well it's uh it's good stuff and uh i'm in, i'm impressed with with uh with your skills and and all the things you got going on what are uh you know some of your your hopes and dreams for the future as we sort of start to to guide towards the end of this podcast tell our audience about you know about what you really you know hope for in the future uh, my hope is to be a great chef one day, own my own restaurant, but I want to work my way up to being a great chef and like having my own restaurant, that's like a big goal to have. And I just want to show everyone that even if I'm blind, I can still do what I love to do and... It's good to have a um, job that you love doing because you don't want to go to a job and um, feel like you don't want to go to it. So do what you love and keep on doing it. Do what you love and keep on doing it. You heard it here, folks. Uh, from uh, V. Shattuck, uh, great advice uh, and is there anything else uh, that you would want to to tell our our audience out there? Because literally, this podcast is watched around the world. Uh, so, is there anything you'd you'd want to share with them about cooking or or anything before we 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 sign off? Um, thanks for having me here. Just stay positive and keep. Continue to complete your goals and, um, like, don't look back. People um, will put you down because it's not worth of time. Like, so it's keep thinking positive and keep on doing what you love. I love that. I love that. Thanks, V. Well, I can tell you I am feeling... Um, more positive just from having met you and, and sitting down and speaking with you here today. And um, I'm not going to ask you what you would name your restaurant because we don't want any more ideas stolen. <laughs> so we're all just going to have to wait for that day to come. Isn't that right? Yep. And, um, you know, I, I just like to, to finish, you know, on top of all the great things that V had to share with us and advice she had. Just remember out there uh, that if you believe it, you can achieve it. 